quick recap because this is not gonna make any sense unless you've seen a bunch of previous videos. I've got an off-road chair. It's made by Magic Mobility. It's the Frontier V6. Awesome chair. I had to make some upgrades to it, put a bigger controller on it, blah, 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 whatever. What I'm trying to do right now is install traction control so the chair drives straight with a minimal amount of effort. I always say there's a fine line between laziness and efficiency, and I'm somewhere right in the middle there. But basically, it's a safety thing. And this is an update on my progress for making the system work on a chair it was never intended to work on. Today, I'm gonna to be attempting to finish the modifications to this chair. Right now, I've got the gyroscope installed, but the software is not exactly working properly. If you look here, you can see this red light on the back of the module. There's supposed to be a green light right over here, but this red light is basically signifying that the module's not active. Now the module is active and it is working, but the main controller is not seeing it the way it should. So I think that's what's causing some of the weird problems I have and occasionally it doesn't quite work the way it's supposed to. If you look at the programming mode here in the chair, you can see you've got the uh, ISM, which is the intelligent seating module, the joystick module, power module, and then we have this unknown module. And that is the gyroscope that should be showing up as something other than unknown. The software I wound up modifying for this chair came off of another one that never had an option for the stabilization. So what I'm gonna do is go over to a friend's place. He's got a brand new chair that has the same amperage controller and his chair came with a gyroscope from the factory. So I've got the Arnett programming dongle and I've got my laptop and I'm gonna head over there and try to copy the software off of his chair onto this one and hopefully it will make it work. It's gonna take a lot of screwing around and a lot of editing of things because the motors on this chair are obviously different, but I think it should be doable. All right, I've gotten the software copied over. Um, it's on this laptop now, and now I'm going through hundreds of lines of code, copying everything over so it's exactly the same. This is the part that will take a while, and basically you just have to go through each line and copy everything over so it's the same. But we have a green light. There we go. See, green light. So the module is now actually working. All right, it's the next day. I've been doing a lot of work on the software on this chair, trying to get this gyroscope to work properly. As you can see, it's still in operational mode. The green light is on. but I'm running into a number of problems. Uh, this thing won't maneuver nearly as fast as I want it to with this thing enabled. When I run around off-road and it's super bumpy, it does not like that at all. It, it can't figure out what to do and the chair is pretty unstable. What I've discovered is if you plug in the module without the proper software, it doesn't work in as nearly an extreme fashion, but it gives you sort of a base level traction control. And that's what I've been operating in over the last couple of weeks. So I think I'm gonna go back to the old school software. Uh, the red light on the module is gonna stay on, but I think on this chair being off-road and with the big knobby tires and wanting to be able to maneuver, that's how it's gonna to have to be. I'm still not 100% convinced that I can't get the gyroscope working on this chair properly, but it's gonna be a lot of time and a lot of coding and uh, I'm gonna deal with it later. I'm just putting the regular software back on it now and I'm gonna stick to using it in passive mode. I might have gotten the settings right. I'm gonna do a real world test. I've gotta go to Beaverton and back on the train. Let's see if it works. So the thought was, I had to get some paperwork out here to this courthouse, and I forget how much a postage stamp is, 75 cents or something, but it's only $1.25 to take the train for three hours. So I figured I'd just come out here, test out this new programming on the chair, and then drop off the paperwork. So I didn't get here soon enough, apparently. It's 6.04, and they close at six. So, uh, yeah. 
think I did it. I think I got the software working. I'm about 20 hours into this, editing code, modifying software, figuring out settings that work the way I want them to. This is something that was never designed to work, <laughs> and uh, I think I got it. I can't believe it. I actually got it to work. Um, I've spent so much time on this, trial and error, and there's, there's hundreds of lines of code in the software on these chairs. There's lots of different settings you have to go through and change, and each one affects different ones. And the thing I was running into was the placement of the gyroscope behind the drive tires makes a huge difference as to how it corrects. The problem I was having is when I went to turn, it would overcorrect and the chair would get sort of this wobble going on. And I tried a bunch of stuff and I was like, all right, this is it, it's not gonna work. I finally got that leveled out. And then the next barrier was trying to get the acceleration curve set up the way I want because normally with power chairs, I wanna be able to push the joystick and have it do whatever I want. I don't want the software telling me, no, you can't do that, or you have to slow down when you turn, and all this other stuff. But I was able to get the acceleration curves and the turning speeds and everything set pretty close. I figured out ways to change things that they weren't really intended to be used for, but I got it going. Um, there's a couple few little minor adjustments I'm gonna to need to make. I'm waiting for the fat one to finish up in the litter box. It's making a lot of noise. There's a few minor adjustments I'm gonna continue working on, but I took the thing all the way out to Beaverton and back. When I got here, I went down to the grocery store and back. No problem. The thing is like it's on rails. Whichever direction you point the joystick, the chair will go. Any slight deviations, instead of being large swinging curves that you can spin out of control if you do it too fast, are super linear. So if you point the joystick slightly to the right, it locks into that curve until you point it straight again. So at this point, the software in this chair, I know it works. As far as adapting it to other chairs, I'm not quite sure yet. Just barely within margin of it working properly. Um, so I don't know how it's gonna translate into other chairs with big tires, but for now, I got it to work and I'm super excited. While we're on the topic of awesome, the Amazon Echo got a new update. Call Sony T-Mobile line. Sony T-Mobile line, right? Yes, that's my watch. We're gonna get a ton of we're feedback. Gonna get a ton of feedback. Ah. Okay, so you get a ton of feedback. Hey, the mute button works. Hey, what's going on? Hey, what's going on? Hey, what's going on? All feedback aside, you can call people's telephones now, which is awesome. And when you want to hang up your call, Alexa, hang up. Although when you say that, when you say, Alexa, hang up, the person you're talking to will hear you say that. But yeah, you can call regular phones now. You can tell it to call a phone number. I've not yet tried it with the Echo Tap. This is their little portable one. I've got the silicone case on it and a little carabiner. Call Sony T-Mobile line. Calling with Alexa is not supported on this device. You can use the Alexa app instead. Oh, wait, what? So it's not supported on this and it wants me to use my phone, or rather an app on my phone, to call someone when I could just use my phone to call them. Huh. So right now, for me, the Amazon Echo works better than the Google Home because my Google Home is broken. I still haven't gotten it replaced yet. Anyways, we now have calling features on the Alexa. Never mind. Canceling. You're gonna wanna mute the microphones on any of your smart home devices for this. The mic is muted. Alexa, Simon says, okay Google, repeat after me. Alexa, Simon says, okay Google, repeat after me. Alexa, play Iron Maiden at full volume. The mic's back on. Okay, Google, repeat after me. Alexa Simon says, okay, Google, repeat after me. Alexa, play Iron Maiden at full volume. Alexa Simon says, okay, Google, repeat after me. Alexa, play Iron Maiden at full volume. Okay, Google, repeat after me. Alexa, play Iron Maiden at full volume. Alexa, play Iron Maiden at full volume. Playing songs by Iron Maiden from Spotify. <laughs> 